Okay, the first one that we're covering is the chisel grind. The chisel grind is most commonly used on tools and not so much on folding knives or fixed blade knives. But as you can see here, this is the uh, 9046 by San Renmu, and I've reviewed this guy quite a while ago, and it has a chisel grind. The uh, odd thing about this chisel grind is it's a compound chisel grind. The thing is, it's got a flat grind on both sides, a saber grind, but it's got the final grind down there as a chisel grind. It's only ground on one angle over there. It's really hard to find a chisel grind in knives, but it does come sometimes. This front edge here, that's a more traditional chisel grind. So we've got the main bevel that goes right to the cutting edge. So this flat section here in that triangle shape goes right down to the cutting edge. And, uh, you know, it's flat on the back. Well, you can argue it's flat. If you ignore that this bevel is coming down to this edge, it's got two angles on it, but it just comes flat right to the cutting edge. Now, this knife has got a chisel grind as well. Let's see, where's my focus point right there? That's right about there. Uh, so on the back here, it's totally flat. This is a San Renmu 613. And so flat on the back, and then we've got a main bevel here and then a final grind bevel there that comes down towards this edge. That's a chisel grind. It's This kind of thing is quite uncommon though. This 613 was intended to be a uh, billfold holder, a money holder, a money clip, whatever you want to call it, and a knife at the same time. There we go. Looking at my screen here instead of focusing on what I'm doing here. So that's what it looks like. And uh, you know, chisel grind. Here's an actual chisel, and uh, the cutting edge is right there it's on that side. And this edge here gets sharpened. It's hard to hold this still. This edge here gets sharpened. And this one's done poorly. I loaned this out to somebody, and uh, oh yeah, they messed that up. You can see all the little changes in the uh, steel face. It should be a s one smooth face there. And a chisel also has what we call a zero grind, and we'll talk about that at the very end of this video. And so woodworking tools very often have chisel grinds, but not so much uh, actually handheld knives. But I wanted to talk about that grind because it's useful because it builds up to other types. Let's move on to number two. All right, next we've got the convex grind. And these sword knives, both of these are sword brand. A lot of the sword knives come with a convex grind. Uh, this one here, I've changed to a regular grind, so it doesn't have a convex grind. But when you buy one of these sword peasant knives, so these knives that fold over like this, they will come from the factory with a convex grind. And I really like the convex grind. I was just testing to see how different it would cut with a regular grind as opposed to a convex grind. So I changed it on here. This guy's still got a convex grind. And uh, the way it works is the at the edge here, it sort of comes rounded to a point. So if we're looking at this knife on this angle, and my hands are the steel, it's, I think of the steel right here on this inside edge of my fingers, it curves in towards the cutting edge. So it's a curved face right here, right down to the cutting edge. A true convex grind has a flat bevel. So this dark surface here, it would be all the way up to near the cutting edge, and then you would have that angled convex grind. This is a convex grind off of a bit of a uh, thinning profile. So they, they ground the side of the blade to make it thinner. This section here and this section here is flat. And then the convex part is right near the edge. Now, most knives are done that way, that how I just explained, the way these sword knives are. But technically, a convex grind is totally flat, the full thickness of the blade, all the way until that curved part starts. It's uh, typically found in outdoor fixed blade knives. It's also the edge that's found on a lot of hatchets and axes. I've got one right here. And so, you know, it's sort of flat here, and then you've got sort of a rounded curve 
to the cutting edge. This is the Sword uh, DP or drop point, and this is one of the Sword Peasant knives in case you want to get one. Uh, what are the strengths, the pros? The pros of this is that it's a very strong uh, knife because you've got a lot of thickness on the blade before you get to the cutting edge. You've got strength behind it. There's a, a good amount of steel back there and it provides a strong cutting edge. Um, it's also not that easy to, to create or sharpen. <laughs> There's a lot of challenges these days, although it's an old traditional kind of grind, these days it's pretty tricky because people don't get trained how to use a whetstone and uh, even on a whetstone this is hard to do because you're trying to create a rounded surface instead of a flat one. Now some sharpening systems like the TS Prof and the Hapstone uh, sharpening systems that I have they come with an attachment to create a convex grind so that makes it easy but you have to get one of those more expensive sharpening systems to get that. Uh, some people have some tricks on how to do it using um, sandpaper and a soft surface behind it, like a old school mouse pad. You know, those mouse pads that are, you know, a little over an eighth of an inch thick and they're soft. There's all kinds of tricks to do it, but actually it is a bit tricky. Uh, one way to do it for a little bit less money is using a work sharp sharpening system. Like I reviewed one. And that's a belt system and the belt kind of uh, conforms to that rounded edge and it helps it to uh, you know stay rounded instead of flat. So that is the convex grind. And now we come to what is called the Scandinavian grind. It might be called the Scandi grind. It might be called the V grind. The thing is it's basically fixed blades that get this kind of grind. There are some other knives that have it, folding knives. I've not reviewed any of them and I wanted to. I've had them in my cart a couple times. I'd like to buy the Cold Steel Fin Wolf. The Cold Steel Fin Wolf is a folding knife that's got this kind of grind on it. These kind of grinds usually have a very high flat section off the side of the knife. So this is the spine and this flat section, the full thickness of the blade. Much like I was saying for the convex grind, a true convex grind has got a large flat section like this as well. And then once you get close to the cutting edge, the blade, you know, seemingly suddenly starts to get thin right to the edge. And it's a very, very strong type of blade. The steel has the full thickness backing behind it. So kind of like I was talking with the convex grind, it's a strong blade. That's one of the biggest strengths of it. Um, it's very good for bushcraft type tasks. Well, what are those? That's working with wood. So doing a lot of wood manipulation, cutting, cleaning, uh, working with all kinds of wood. Not a hunter's knife. Uh, this is not good for skinning an animal or anything like that. They tend to be of this kind of shape. This is the Mora Garberg. I did a review of the Mora Garberg uh, not too terribly long ago. And they generally have you know a belly that's fairly short and then a long flat section like this. Uh, this here is the uh, uh, Real Steel Bushcraft Zenith and uh, it is an Ostap Hell design. I, I like Ostap Hell. Uh, this time he made his design have a very strong point on it so it is a good knife for puncturing things. Notice how the belly is much more shallow than you know this Mora Garberg. And so the belly takes a whole lot longer to get to the full thickness of the blade. And then you got that shorter flat section. So it's good for, you know, different types of tasks, but very similar types of tasks as uh, the other Scandi grind is. And the um, Cold Steel Fin Wolf is sort of a cross between these two different, uh, you know, the way the belly is and then the flat section. Most are like this. Uh, you've got not just Mora, uh, all of Mora's competitors, Holt the Fours, Hele, uh, oh boy, I can't even remember all the names. There's so many uh, uh, European style knives that are this kind of style. It's a very European thing. You don't see this in North America very much from North American knife makers. Uh, what are the uh, strengths, the pros on it? It's hard to damage this blade. Uh, it's good for batoning because you've got so much strength in here. If you are gonna baton with a knife, this is the best kind of knife to do it with. Um, it's got very good edge retention. That's because it gets thick right behind the grind so quickly. 
So a lot of support there. Some people find it very easy to sharpen these and some people find it terribly hard to sharpen them. <laughs> if you're sharpening them by hand, you know, you just put the, like on a flat stone, uh, a wet stone is what they're called. Uh, you just put it down on the stone, put the edge right here flat on that stone, and then you can start sharpening. And you know, you move across the tip too, but the main flat side, you just have to go back and forth and you're sharpening it. Now there's another thing I'm gonna mention again. Uh, these kinds of knives often have a zero bevel or a zero grind. It's both terms are used. And what that is, is right here at the cutting edge, there's not any extra grinding. It's just this flat side, you know, that's a little over, around a quarter of an inch here, a little over a quarter of an inch there. It's, that's all they've done is, I just poked my finger. It's just a very tiny bit, so nothing to worry about. Uh, so it's very easy. You sharpen it on that stone and the whole grind goes right to the edge and that's it. But most companies, when they make these kinds of knives and sell them, they put a little micro bevel on them. They do a tiny bit extra grinding right at the edge just to give it a sharp little edge. And so what it looks like is it's, it's flat and then right at the very tip, you know, they just do a, maybe I can do it better with this finger. There we go. So here's the flat side of the grind and at the very edge they do a tiny little bit. A zero grind is without that micro bevel. And we'll talk about that again at the very end. And now let's move on to number four, a much more popular grind, the saber grind. And now we're getting to more popular knives, uh, much more common knives. This is the saber grind. And the main defining uh, thing about a saber grind is that you've got a flat spot near the spine of the blade and then you've got the bevel down to the cutting edge. Now, instead of like we saw just before on the Scandinavian grind, you have less of a flat spot up here. The bevel, that's this part here where it changes from the thickness to the thinness. That's the bevel. The uh, bevel is more than, you know, just a tiny bit of the edge. Uh, it's often right around half, a little bit more than half, and um, it can go, there's all kinds of vari variabilities. It, you can make a knife any way you want, right? So this is a Samurai Mew S611. And what they've done is they've made the bevel come quite close to the spine. So some people are gonna wanna call this a full flat grind or just a flat grind. Um, and you know, the argument can go either way. It's not a big deal, there's not you know, solid right and wrong, you know, black and white an answers. There's this gray area in between. This is a saber grind, and this is most likely referred to as a saber grind, although some people might refer to it as a flat grind. And we're gonna talk about flat grinds later on. I call them full flat grinds. I tend to call a saber grind anything where there's a flat section that goes at least half of the way along the blade. So as you can see, on this knife, if I bring it a little bit closer here, on this knife, if I hold the knife on the right angles, to when you see the light flashing on it, this flat spot up here on the spine goes at least halfway down the blade. It's still flat right up to about there. It ends right there and now there's no more flat section. Now, one of the best things I like about saber grind knives is they are the most easy knife to sharpen if you're using a sharpening system that you clamp knives onto because you've got a flat area to clamp onto. So if you can afford one of those systems, and you can, because the most inexpensive system out there that I recommend, I've not yet reviewed on my channel, and unfortunately I sold mine, so I'll have to either borrow one or buy one. <laughs> To, to do a video on it. And that is the Lansky sharpening system that has a clamp on it. Lansky's got all kinds of sharpening tools. But when we say Lansky system, there's a system that has a clamp that holds the knife and then rods with sharpening stones on the end. And it's usually around 50 US dollars or less. It's often less than that actually. And they go up from there. So it's got a spot to clamp onto. 
Now, to add a little bit more confusion to it, some people will say that this main bevel here doesn't need to be flat to be a saber grind. You could put a hollow grind in here and it's still a saber grind. I'm not of that opinion. So this is the new Ganzo FH31 that I just got yesterday and I'll be reviewing it soon. So it's got that kind of grind. Uh, this is the uh, Real Steel H6 Blue Sheep, one of the most popular knives that Real Steel Knives has made. Uh, but Real Steel has the H6S one, which has a full flat grind. So this bevel goes right to the spine. Um, and as you can see here, uh, a saber grind may or may not have a swedge. This knife has got a swedge up at the top. That's just steel taken away to make it thinner at the spine. This knife doesn't. Actually, it does. It's got a swedge right here at the front. <laughs> And this knife has got it coming back a little bit further, but it's got a long flat section, so it's a saber. We're calling all of these saber grinds. Now, the most common knife that's made with a saber grind is military knives. Almost every military knife tend to be saber grinds. Uh, the older they are, they tend to be hollow saber grinds, which I just finished saying. I don't use that term, generally speaking. Uh, so that's the kind it is. It's also common with um, EDC knives. Uh, that's what this is. It's an everyday carry knife. So a knife that somebody carries in their pocket very commonly has a saber grind on it. It's a strong knife. It uh, has enough thick steel back here to still be a strong knife. Uh, and then it comes down to a thin edge. So it's still good at slicing. Uh, very often they come with a good point on them. This is a worn cliff, not so much as, here we go, this guy, this point on here. So it's good for puncturing into things. Uh, very good tip on here. So how they make the tip of the knife, as you can see, here's three different ways of making the tip part of the knife, and they're all saber grinds. When we talk about the spine and how it gets different at the tip of the knife, that's more the shape of the knife. And I've talked, I've got videos on that already, so I'm not going to cover that in detail right here. Um, the strengths of this is it's a good way to make a strong knife. You still have lots of steel that's thick. I already mentioned that. It's durable and it's sort of an all purpose kind of cutting edge. It's good for slicing, it's good for chopping. Um, like if you're chopping small things, uh, softer things, not, um, you know, a hard wood. And it's good for all kinds of things. Um, like I said, a lot of military knives are like this, so it's good for, you know, the defense of the human. It's okay for batoning, but I don't recommend it. Some people, you know, they recommend a saber grind all day long for batoning. I tend not to recommend it, even on fixed blades. Um, if this knife was twice as big, I still probably wouldn't recommend it for batoning as much as I'd recommend a Scandinavian grind for that kind of task. It's a multi-use kind of knife. A cross between a chopper and a slicer that does okay on both. And so if you're looking at a knife and it's the right price and you like the materials, you like the shape, styling of the knife, and it happens to be a saber grind, that's not a reason to say no to the knife that's it's a good choice it's actually a very good choice for a number of reasons that i already mentioned now we're going to move on to number five in our list so here i've got a bunch of full flat grind knives this specific type of grind is becoming more and more popular all the time more and more knife makers are making this as their primary type of especially on folding knives their primary type of grind that they will sell um, one of the old, traditional ones that's been around for a number of years here is the Ontario Rat, the one and two. It's got a full flat grind. The main bevel, where it's going from thick to thin, goes all the way across the full depth of the blade. There is no flat area up here at all that you can clamp onto. That doesn't mean you can't clamp onto this type of knife and sharpen it. And I'm going to be doing a video on that in the upcoming weeks, hopefully before the end of May, that you can securely clamp onto and properly sharpen a full flat grind, but that's how it's made. Uh, this guy, I call this guy a full flat grind. This is the Civivi Naja. It does have a flat section there, 
but it doesn't go halfway down the blade. It comes close to halfway, but not quite. So I call this a full flat grind. And so that's why I don't call this a full flat grind. We've got the Best Tech Pebble. It's all the way from the spine to the cutting edge. It's transitioning from thick to thin. Here's a, a traditional full flat grind knife, the Open L series, and they've got this knife in every size you can imagine that you might want. Um, I think this is the number 10, not sure, but from the spine to the edge, again, it's going all the way down to the full thickness. Now the Open L's, they come with a zero grind, and we'll talk about that later, like I keep alluding to. Not alluding to, I come outright mentioning it, don't I? Here's a fixed blade that has a full flat grind, and even fixed blades are getting more popular as full flat grinds as well. This is the Arbiter by Real Steel Knives. Um, and so what is this knife for? Well, this is the most versatile knife shape, in my opinion, and that's why it's so very popular. If you've got a knife, let's put this aside a little bit, make some room here so I don't hurt myself. If you've got a knife with a lot of depth, that means that the transition from thick to thin is very slow and gradual, which makes it very, very good as a slicing knife, especially if it's got a lot of belly. And that's why this knife was created. This is one of the ultimate slicing folding knives out there. And it's great for that task. Um, and, you know, they make it a spot for you to put in your finger. You can watch the review if you want to watch more details. But this is the ultimate kind of slicer. Uh, this knife is also great for slicing. That transition is nice and gradual and takes a long time. If the blade was very thin this way, the depth, the edge to the, edge to the spine, if it was fairly narrow then that angle would be sharper, more like a wedge instead of, you know, like a slicing blade. So it tapers slowly. That's the best if you want uh, to take advantage of most of what a full flat grind can do for you. Uh, the pros for this is it's great for slicing, especially the, the, the more gradual the angle on that main bevel. What's the weaknesses? Well, they tend to have weaker edges. Uh, depending on the type of steel that they use, this kind of grind is most likely to chip on the edge. I didn't say it's likely to chip. It's just more likely than the other grinds are. Uh, these days we've got some really premium steels and even the mid-grade steels are quite tough and a lot of the lower grade steels are also quite tough and they won't chip easily at all. But it can fail the most easily at the edge with a full flat grind. They are generally not designed for piercing tasks, although they can be, like this Arbiter. If you take a look at this, if you take a look at the shape of this blade, uh, the way it comes to a tip really small like that, you know, this thing can be used as a um, puncturing type of tool very, very well. But most of the time, they're not made that way. Very often they're made like this, and, uh, you know, that's not a puncturing type of knife. It can do that, but it's not really designed for that. And most of them used to be designed this way. And now we've got more and more knife designers doing things like this. This is more of a spear point kind of blade where the uh, cutting edge angle, the, the angle of the belly here and the spine are very much the same. These aren't exactly the same, but they're very much the same. And that's often good for, you know, piercing kind of tasks. Uh, I don't like using the word stabbing, especially on YouTube, because that's a good way to get videos demonetized. So there you go. That's the pros and the cons and the main weaknesses of it. And uh, we're going to move on to the next one, which used to be the most popular kind of grind that's out there. And it's a grind that I think is very, very underrated. Keep watching. And now we're talking about the hollow grind. Now the hollow grind is a grind that was very, very popular at, uh, especially at the beginning of this century, in the 1900s, I should say, <laughs> not this century, the previous one. It's 2019, isn't it? Uh, very popular in the previous century in uh, you know, all kinds of industries, all kinds of uses, not industries, all kinds of purposes of knives. So here we've got a great big hunting knife. Um, hunting knives, you know, are were usually made with hollow grinds. You can still find a lot of them with that. This is a new knife that I got very recently from Canadian Tire, so it's only available in Canada. Here's an older uh, 
while a knife from an older company, Marbles, Marbles was an American company, and now a lot of their knives they make overseas, but this is the MR324. If you watched the video for this, I did that review a long time ago, and uh, my quality of making videos has gone up a lot since then. But this is an assisted knife, and like I talked about saber grinds, you've got a flat area up here, but then you've got this hollow grind, and I'll explain the hollow grind in just a minute. I'm giving the examples first. Uh, this is a copy of the Hootenanny. I don't call it a clone because there's no claim that this is a Hootenanny. This is, there's no CRT T labeling. There's no Ken Onion labeling on here. There's no word Hootenanny on there anywhere. They just took a very popular new knife, or recent knife, I should say, a very popular recent knife with a hollow grind, and they've copied it. And uh, it's got a hollow grind, and it's got a flat spot up there going up the blade. It is rare to have full hollow grinds. Uh, remember, I just did the full flat grinds, so it's very uncommon to have this hollow grind come all the way to the spine, but it does happen. So I'll still call those hollow grinds, mostly because they're very uncommon. Now here's an old traditional knife. Well, this one's not old, but the styling is the Buck 110. A lot of Buck's knives have hollow grinds, especially their hunting knives. Now this is a hunting knife. It's also called as the 110 Hunter. Um, and it's got a hollow grind. Now, what is a hollow grind? Well, with a hollow grind, and this part of the grind here, this is the hollow grind. It's curved inward. It's concave. So if we've got it like in this orientation, and it's not going to stand because it doesn't have a flat spot, but imagine this knife in this orientation. You'll have two round stones like wheels standing on edge, um, and those two wheels will come down, and they'll take steel away, and of course, then they'll turn away. Uh, very often they do the grind uh, from the bottom like this on those wheels. So the wheels are coming down like this and across so that it won't get drawn into between the stones and uh, break the whole system. And so they sharpen them underneath. They used to do it by hand, you know, just draw the knife across those stones and it's sharpening on both sides at the same time. Now, some factories using robotics and stuff will have flat grinds done the same way but very often they're ground one side at a time, whereas hollow grinds are almost always done both sides at the same time uh, in factories, the, the way factories do it. Uh, small, you know, custom knife makers who do hollow grinds, they tend to have to do them one at a time, once one bevel at a time, but that's how they're made. Very often, and usually, they're only partway up the spine. I've already mentioned that. Uh, so this knife has got just a short hollow grind, um, and this knife has got a deep hollow grind. What are the pros and the cons of hollow grinds? Well, the strengths of this grind is this is the best slicing grind you can possibly get. And I know some people are going to disagree with me, and it's okay, you're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not, I, I don't, anything that I say you can take with a grain of um, humility. I don't say this is the right way, and if you don't agree with me, you are wrong. I'm not that kind of guy. But hollow grinds are the best kind of slicing for one reason. They're very thin at the edge, usually, almost always, and then the steel stays thin, and it stays thin before it starts getting thicker. Whereas a flat grind, it immediately immediately starts getting thicker right behind the cutting edge. So you've got your cutting edge and then the steel gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Let's, if we're looking at the knife in this orientation, so here we've got the knife, looking at it in this orientation, so at the edge it's a certain thinness and it stays that thin for a while before it starts getting thicker. Now, this knife has that transition starting fairly soon because it's a not a very deep hollow grind. This one's got a deep hollow grind. You know, it's quite a bit deeper than even this much larger knife. And so it stays thin behind the edge. Uh, those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, you know what I'm talking about. It stays thin for a while before it starts getting thicker. And the biggest advantage for that is 
when you go to sharpen your knife. The best thing about that is when it comes to sharpening the knife, because when I need to sharpen this knife, I can sharpen it and I can remove steel and it'll still be the same thinness behind the grind. That's also a weakness because that means you don't have a lot of steel supporting the cutting edge. So it's it creates a very sharp, well, if you've sharpened it, it can be the sharp slicing delicate edge that's great for cutting through things and uh, it just slices very, very well when it's built and maintained and sharpened properly. I'm assuming that for all of these knives when I'm talking about them, I'm all assuming all of them are sharpened and maintained properly. Then this hollow grind is the best slicing knife out there. Great for skinning animals. And that's why hunting knives have traditionally been hollow grinds. If you have a hollow grind that is thick behind the edge, it still can be a good chopper. So this knife, the, the way you can see that it's thick behind the edge is it's got a deep section that's shiny right here because it's got a coating on it. So it's got a long or deep final grind. And so right behind the grind here, this thing's almost a millimeter thick. And so this works just fine as a chopper. It, it's actually very good as a chopping knife. And so it's the kind of cutting edge that you can sharpen the most times before you start getting thicker behind the grind. It's great for hunting, um, but it's not the best for really deep cuts. Because imagine a very deep cut, you get to this thickness of the blade here, and then you've got the full thickness of the blade that's moving between you know, the two different layers that you're cutting through. But it's really good for shallow slicing kind of cuts, works awesome for that. Recently, there was a big fiasco with Schrade and hollow grinds. If you remember the Jessica X, and I'm just talking about this now because I haven't done that much of an update on this, and I need to. I no longer have my Jessica X because I sold it. I just really needed the money at the time. But this is a stand-in for it. This is that Schrade that I was talking about, the SCHF 48 the uh, Jethro, I think it is. Uh, the Jessica X used to be made with a flat grind, a saber grind. So we had a flat section on the blade, and then this section here, you know, it was more straight though. The blade's very straight, not curvy like this. And comes down to the cutting edge with a flat grind, making it very, very robust. Now that knife has been, when it was made that way, the way that Chris Tanner designed it, uh, he's got his channel, um, Prepared Mind 101. Don't let his facial expression turn you off to his channel. Uh, I don't watch him very much myself, but uh, a lot of people get turned off to his channel because he looks like he's angry all the time. <laughs> it, that's just the way he, his expression looks. He's not angry. Actually, he's not angry very often at all. And when he is angry, his face will turn red. <laughs> and like some of the videos where they talk about this fiasco that I'm talking about right now, where Schrade did a bad move. They didn't contact Chris Tanner and they made the next new run of the SCHF 43 and they made it with a hollow grind. If they would have talked to him first and at least told him that that's what they're doing, they could have saved a big problem and they could have saved a big problem for knife newbies especially, especially guys that were joining the knife community or had joined the knife community just a few years before the summer of 2017 because that's when this happened because Chris Tanner made a big video and videos where he talked about how terrible the hollow grind is and people listened to him and got the wrong impression. Hollow grinds are not bad. Hollow grinds are awesome. I love hollow grinds. I wish there would be more hollow grinds. It's just that his specific design isn't best with a hollow grind. The design for his knife, the Jessica X, is best with a flat grind, especially at the tip, because hollow grinds tend to be weak at the tip. And so he shows a lot of uh, Jessica X's that he tested, um, 
and he tested the same way that he did before and the tips would break off. And I'm saying, yeah, of course, it's not designed for that kind of job if it has that kind of grind. So Schrade, in my opinion, should never have made that specific knife with a hollow grind. And the sad thing of it is now there's a whole generation of knife guys and gals who have the wrong idea of hollow grinds. Hollow grinds are good. Just like every other grind, they've got their strengths and their weaknesses. The weaknesses of a hollow grind, as I mentioned, they're not great for deep cuts. Um, and the cutting edge doesn't have a lot of support behind it, and so the cutting edge can chip more easily. Those are the main weaknesses. And like I said, if you keep it really thick behind the grind, then a knife like this is actually a very good chopper too. And this thing chops really well. And I've used this thing quite a bit um, the summer before last, and <laughs> you can't see any wear marks on here. And that's because the kind of wood that I was chopping didn't scratch up the side of the knife. But this kind of edge, you can see I've sharpened it a few times. You know, it just worked very, very well for a lot of chopping, especially through soft woods like pine and spruce and those kinds of things. And that's mostly what I used it for. And it just worked very, very well. So that's the last of the main sections of the main grinds. Now let's talk about some bonus things. And now in the bonus section, we're going to talk about multi-grinds. Um, these two multi-grinds are actually the same, or very similar, but they can be all different kinds of things. And then we're going to talk about the zero grind, and I won't take very long. What's a multi-grind? It's when they use two different grinds, or more, on one blade. So here we got, this is a Kaiser. These are actually both Kaisers. This is the KI4437. It's a Klecker design. We've got a hollow grind here and a saber grind here. So this part of the knife here is an awesome slicing knife. And the tip here has been made stronger than most hollow grinds have by putting a flat grind or a saber grind on here. So it's a flat saber grind. So we've got a strong tip and also the best slicing knife edge that you can possibly get. Uh, this is also called sometimes by some people a nightmare grind, but uh, you can get multi grinds that are different. I've got um, especially some HX Outdoors knives that I've had that got weird grinds on them. Uh, this one, like this one, you know, you've got a hollow grind here and a saber grind here. So it's got a strong tip and yet it slices really well. And this guy's got a recurve, but we're not going to talk about recurves right now. It's just a multi-grind. So that's what these are just called. They're simply called multi-grinds where you've got two or more grinds. What the point of this is they try to take the strengths of different grinds and put them together in one knife. That's awesome. I love multi-grind knives. And some people just hate them because how do I sharpen it? Well, you sharpen it just like you do any other knife. And it works. Now... What is a zero grind or a zero bevel? I've mentioned it already, and let's just go over it very shortly. It's most common on this type of knife, the um, Scandi grind or Scandinavian grind or V grind knives, where, like I said, they sharpen the entire face of the bevel on a stone, and then the edge just has that one grind. That makes it one of the sharpest kinds of edges you can possibly have because there's very little transition of friction from you know where we've got this shiny part to where we've got the stonewash face of the bevel there's there's no transition point for it and so this knife uh, the open owls they all come with a zero grind um, and uh, it's a great grind to have but what's the problem with them or the challenge with them is I've got to sharpen this entire face here. So all the steel from where my fingernail is down to the cutting edge, I've got to take steel off of that entire face when I sharpen this knife. So most people who have, who like zero grinds, don't want to be eating through that much of their sharpening stones every single time. So very often they sharpen with just a micro bevel, you know, two, three, four times. And after the micro bevel has been 
you know, they have to increase the angle of the micro bevel each time. So it's, it might be something like this. And the next time they do the micro bevel, it's like this. The next time it's like that. It, and it's getting bigger to maintain a sharp edge without going back on the steel. You do the micro bevel a few times and then you've got to sharpen that whole face. Now the con for doing micro bevels is you've got to take away a whole lot more steel when you do end up doing a new zero bevel. So it's six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh, why some people want to do have zero grinds uh, with or without micro bevels. If you've got any questions about that, uh, go ahead and ask. I don't know if I can explain it any more clearly than that. The challenge is it's hard to sharpen a knife to a zero grind uh, in terms of the amount of work it takes. Um, technically, it's not hard at all. It's a very simple grind, uh, way to sharpen. It just takes an awful lot of work and time, especially a full flat grind like this. I've, you've got to take off steel off the entire face of the entire knife in order to get that edge the same as it was before. You know, so if I chipped a little piece of this edge out, I'd have to take out a lot of steel. The steel would get, you know, thinner all the way up to the spine the whole face of it would get thinner when I sharpen a zero grind. And most of these knives, like the ones that come from Mora, the knife comes with a micro bevel from the factory. And that's because they know people aren't gonna sharpen the full bevel every single time. And so they kind of show you from the start how to do it. So here's my video. I've covered the six main grinds. There are other grinds out there. Uh, because people have uh, interesting brains and they think of all kinds of interesting, cool stuff. There's other kinds of grinds that are possible, but the most common ones, like I said, are the saber grind. The uh, that's the flat grind that goes part way up the spine, up to the spine. A full flat grind, and the hollow grind. Those are the three main ones out there. Those three grinds are quite good. Uh, there's not one grind that's better than another all the time. They have different roles, different tasks. So think about what you want to do with the knife and you know, then maybe look back at your notes about this video if you took notes. And then choose the knife that has the grind that'll do the task that you want to do. And uh, all the best to you. Thanks for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. I didn't say cut your chum. Just towards them, that is, away from yourself. Have a great one. Bye for now.